As I've gotten older, I've learned to see the silver linings in some of the more tragic situations that life throws at us. Like whenever I've eaten at a Waffle House within five blocks of a Malcolm X Boulevard, I didn't complain about the greasy food or the poor service. I just look forward to the fact that I may very likely get a free show right there within the restaurant. And when I reflect on the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I like to think that the modern wonders of anime wouldn't have been possible without the large doses of radiation. And when billions of dollars in damage is done in just a few days from a bug in a security appliance that hooks into the Windows kernel, I tell myself that maybe, just maybe, this will be enough to get Microsoft to stop letting third-party companies crash critical systems with their buggy code. I was browsing the Windows IT Pro blog earlier today when I stumbled upon this article titled Windows Resiliency, Best Practices, and the Path Forward that got those hopes of mine up just a little bit more. So as you might have guessed, this article is addressing the CrowdStrike incident and the broader topic of kernel mode drivers in the Windows operating system. Because if the CrowdStrike's Falcon sensor didn't run with system privileges on Windows, then the kernel could have just killed the Falcon sensor process when it tried to read invalid memory, instead of taking down the whole kernel and the whole system in order to kill the process. This post goes on to say that the CrowdStrike incident clearly shows that Windows must prioritize change and innovation in the area of end-to-end -end resilience. And one example that they give us of an innovation that could help prevent issues like this in the future is the VBS Enclave. Now, don't confuse the VBS from VBS Enclave with Visual Basic Scripts. That's the old scripting language for the Windows platform that Microsoft started deprecating last year, I think, and really everyone should have stopped using it years prior. Uh, but anyway, the VBS in this context stands for Virtualization Based Security. And there's several separate posts on Microsoft's websites about VBS and VBS enclaves that you should check out if you're really curious about the deeper details of this. But with regard to programs with kernel access like CrowdStrike Falcon, the VBS enclave could provide an isolated environment for those processes and those programs to run in so that if there's a problem with the code in the application, or even if malware manages to take over that application, then the process is going to be isolated from the rest of the kernel. So obviously, this is good news for people that want to continue to use Windows, but more importantly, this is great news for gamers that use Linux. In case you didn't know, one of the big obstacles to gaming on Linux right now is that a lot of the big popular games require an anti-cheat program that needs to have access to your operating system and that needs to be running in order for the game to run or at least for you to be able to play these games online. Now on Linux, there has been a native easy anti-cheat client that was used for native Linux games that had anti-cheat like Rust, War Thunder, and Seven Days to Die before they decided to abandon Linux users a couple of years ago. Although I do think you can still play Rust on non-easy anti-cheat servers, but the point is anti-cheat on Linux runs in user space. It does work, but it doesn't hook into the kernel, which makes it a lot less effective at stopping cheaters in video games. But most desktop Linux users don't want something like a proprietary anti-cheat program running in their kernel anyway because of the privacy implications. But also, the Linux kernel is so much more open than the Windows kernel 
end users on Linux can modify anything they want in the kernel. A lot of Linux users actually build their kernel from source and you know choose what they want active in the kernel if you're using Gentoo, for example. So because end users on Linux can modify almost anything they want in the kernel anyway, kernel level anti-cheat would still be a lot less effective on Linux than it is on Windows, at least for the most dedicated cheaters that are gonna go messing around with the kernel. Uh, and this announcement from Microsoft kind of sounds like they're gonna start restricting third-party access to the Windows kernel, and they're gonna start pushing those developers to write their programs or make their programs run in a more isolated computing environment that has lower privilege levels. Now, what's ironic about these changes coming out now is that Microsoft actually tried implementing something similar with what they called PatchGuard almost 18 years ago back in the Windows Vista days. Uh, but there was a lot of pushback for this. So two of the major antivirus companies at that time were Symantec and McAfee antivirus. And yes, I'm talking about that McAfee antivirus. Uh, and, you know, they fought back against the patch guard premise. And, well, the reason for that is because, of course, most antivirus programs also want to have kernel level access. They basically run as rootkits themselves in order to prevent you from getting rootkits on your system. Uh, and Symantec in particular was so annoyed with patch guard and some of these other changes that Microsoft was making to Vista that they filed an antitrust complaint to the European Union. And this was enough to get Microsoft to back down from implementing the patch guard change all those years ago. So I'm really hoping that antivirus companies, CrowdStrike, anti-cheat developers, and everybody else who wants access to the Windows kernel these days uh, don't get their way this time. And Microsoft kicks these companies out of the kernel because it could have a huge trickle-down effect for Linux gamers if anti-cheat in user space becomes the norm again. And since a lot of Linux gamers probably have jobs like supporting machines that could have been affected by the CrowdStrike bug and they probably got a lot of gaming time taken away from them uh, that weekend. You know, this change that Microsoft is making could be a huge win-win. More of their games are gonna work and they don't have to spend so much time fixing a bunch of crappy Windows machines. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win where you can get awesome merch like the Open Base t-shirt or the Little Damon hoodie. 10% discount store-wide for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.